What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode number 28 of Four Life Trading Cards podcast and video series. Today, I this morning actually, I got a um, tweet um, from Flipping Fan, and he basically asked, he said, Hey, Sasha, thanks for um, all the info you are sharing. Do you believe that we are headed to a crash in the card market similar to the 80s? And then he also asked, Are prisms overprinted? So that's what I kind of wanted to talk about today. Um, I know there has been some discussion about this, but let's get let's go to that first part of the question. Um, do you believe that we are headed to a crash in the card market similar to the '80s? Um, yes and no. Um, we are there's it's it's quite different than the '80s. In the '80s, we didn't have you know PSA grading or B, BGS grading. That's like one main thing. Um, and I think when we grade cards like this, it gives um, it gives the card um, added value, right? So that's one thing that is quite different than what we saw in the '80s, where it was just selling cards for cards, and it was and, and nothing was graded. You didn't have anything PSA nine, PSA eight, PSA ten, um, and there was also a lot of like fake cards out there. And I think the grading process um, does a really good job of kind of um, weeding out all the fake stuff. So that's one thing that's a little bit different than the 80s. And the, the reason I really say yes and no is because, you know, there's a couple things. Um, like if, if, if the housing market crashed tomorrow or the stock market crashed tomorrow and we go into a recession, the first thing that's always going to go, it's going to be cards because people just don't have that extra money to spend um, on cards and, you know, collectibles and stuff like that. So yes, it could possibly happen, right? If we, you know, went to, into a huge war, stuff like that, that could happen. Um, and that's kind of the risk you are willing to take coming into the card market, just like if you're going into the stock market though, just like if you're going into the housing market too, right? If the housing market crashed and you bought a home for let's say $200,000, it's probably not gonna be worth $200,000 after the market crashed. Now the same thing though, with the housing market, you could hold that, you can keep it, and um, in 10 years, you know, the value can go back up again. Same thing with cards. It's it's really just like a cycle. Um, but the, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, we're not seeing a mass overproduction like we saw in the 80s. In the 80s, people were just buying, you know, buying up boxes of cards and, and going into their local shops and buying up because they thought that, you know, in 30 years, you know, that box or whatever it was, you know, that new Topps baseball, whatever, would be worth a lot of money. But these companies were overproducing these cards to an extreme. Um, now, we're not seeing that right now at this particular time. But something I have talked about for a long time is the price point we're seeing in Prism Silvers. I really do think Prism Silvers are just... The, the amount that people are willing to pay for them do not make sense. Um, if you compare that to the numbered cards that are out there, I do think long-term numbered cards are a better option than your Prism Silver cards um, because Prism Silvers, what are people really buying it for? They're buying it for the appeal, um, the, the shiny look. But in reality, you know, the numbered cards are actually more rare. Um, so that is one thing I would say. I don't not I don't think Prism in general is overproduced, but I do think Prism Silvers are definitely overproduced um, for for where what you can get um, you know the price point at. Um, so I do I I do think in the next I don't know couple years or so we will see um, Prism Silvers not have that much of you know hopefully it won't be at that high because I think that could be a cause. Um, for a market um, alteration. Um, so like if if you're going out there, you know, right now and you're thinking long term, I would say go buy a numbered card, a num numbered prism over your prism silver. I think the reason people really like prism silvers right now as well is because, you know, when a player does really good, the first thing that usually goes up is going to be your prism silvers. Um, and then it's going to be your base and your numbered um, you really, you really see that first quick, like jump of prices really in your silvers. Um, so I think that's why kind of people like them, but I just don't think that could sustain for a long period of time. Um, so that's why I say yes to a little portion of it. And again, you know, 
I, I don't, I really don't think, I think we're in the, in the beginning, um, the early stages, um, of, of the card market really taking off. I don't even think we're in its prime yet. This is really just early stages. We're going to be seeing way more sneaker heads come into the hobby. I don't think, I think that's something that a lot of people haven't really, um, comprehended yet. All these guys who buy and sell sneakers, I've said this over and over again, they have such a hard time obtaining product. You have to have bots, you know, you have to have connections to get these products. Now, when you get it, it's cool because you can flip it right away on StockX um, and eBay and places like that, but it's just so tough to get, to, to obtain the product. Um, so what we're seeing is, you know, and what I'm seeing just from based off me is are all these, there's a lot of sneakerheads who DM me and try to get into contact with me and just trying to learn. Um, and I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. Um, you know, the benefit of sports cards is if you really think, you know, um, Kevin Porter Jr. is going to be good. Michael Porter Jr. is going to be good. You know, you can go buy up um, as many cards as you want as of that player. So really in sports cards, you're not going to have a tough time obtaining um, product um, unless you're talking about like rare vintage or stuff like that. Um, if you really think that, you know, Shea Alexander is going to be good, you can go buy up hundreds to thousands of his card, you know, Lonzo Ball, on and on and on. So I think that's that's a big that's a big thing for people in collectibles, even Funko Pops, that are going to be coming in. And I think that we've seen coming in. Um, now, there are some hardcore, you know, um, collectors in the sports card game and haven't been around it a long time that don't kind of like that happening but i really do believe that this is going to be the new trend that we're going to be seeing um and again i think we're just at the early stages of it um so i think that's a reason that you know i think it's honestly it's a good thing overall um, that more people are coming into the hobby and learning um again yes i mean that might end up happening from years down the line that um, you know, that, you know, there's a, there's a crash, right? It's, it, it's not never going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, but I just don't think it's as soon as maybe some people think. Um, I think we're, again, we're just at the early stages of the card market really taking off. Um, especially because, you know, there's, there's 40 year old dads, you know, 35 year old dads coming back into the hobby and wanting to buy the things that they wish they had bought when they were younger. Um, and then, you know, their kids coming into the hobby as well. Um, so there's a lot of more people coming into the hobby. Um, you know, the sneaker heads I already talked about. So overall, no, I don't think, you know, it's going to happen soon. But yes, um, it will eventually happen. I mean, you can't just say it's not because, again, you know, the market can crash tomorrow. You know, the housing market can crash tomorrow. The stock market can crash tomorrow. It's very, it's all similar to the, to the card market. Um, just think about it the same way, right? But again, if you're thinking about it the same way, if you keep holding it, then, you know, um, over time, the value will go back up unless it's overproduced, right? So um, will there be a time where, you know, Panini overproduces cards in the next couple of years? I could probably see that because I hope they don't because I think... Um, I think that's, you know, greedy and in general just hurt the market. But um, we've seen history repeat itself. And I think it's um, it's not wise not to look back on history because usually what happens is um, it repeats itself. So, yes, I do think um, eventually it will probably happen. But again, I think we're at the very early, early, early stages. I don't think really people understand that sports cards, It in, in general, I think people... You know, people who are into even fashion and and sneakers with that are really going to be getting into this market. Um, and it's just going to be a cool thing to have, you know, like a Luka um, based PSA 10. It's going to be a cool thing to have a LeBron James rookie card. Um, it, it's really going to get to that point. And I think, again, we're just at the early stages. Uh, that that um, tweet I got was from Flipping Fam. So, again, I hope that answers your question um a bit he also did say i'd be surprised because they're oh he said when he said our prisms overprinted question mark and then he said i'd be surprised because they're so fine hard to find in retail i mean yeah it's really tough to find right now but again 
in the next couple of years, you know, Panini can overproduce cards and probably will just because that's what history has shown with tops and all that sort of stuff. Um, but again, a cool thing that we're seeing now when I talked about numbered cards is there are numbered cards now. I don't think in the 80s there were. Um, so number of cards really do hold value in the long term. Um, so if you're really investing, again, I said, you know, probably numbered over prism silvers. Think about it this way. If there's, you know, if you have a Shea, this isn't numbered, but just to give you an example, if you have a Shea Alexander numbered card to 50, there's only going to be 50 of those in the world. So you're never going to have an overproduction of that card that you're getting. Um, so I think looking at numbered cards from an investment stand for, standpoint long term is really, really good um, because you're never going to have that card overproduced. Now, when we're talking about silvers, they can be overproduced to the extreme because silvers aren't numbered. And again, at the price point where they're at, it just seems crazy. Like a Luca, um, a Luca silver is, you know, $1,300, which... Honestly, like a couple months ago, it was two, it was two grand. Um, now, if you're flipping short term, um, it works. But I, I, I don't really think holding a Luca Silver PSA 10 long term is going to be as good as investment as a numbered card. Just my um, personal opinion. So I kind of hope that answered your guys the question um, and give you kind of idea. Um, yes, it, it will probably eventually happen, but no, we're just at the early stages right now of the card market even taking off in general. Um, so thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Um, my name's Sasha. You guys probably know me from my Instagram page at Four Life Trading Cards. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you're if you're listening on the podcast, please follow me on Spotify. And then if you're listening on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. That would help me out a ton. Please like this video and comment as well if you want to comment um and then um on my instagram page you can always dm me hit me up i'm always answering questions and stuff like that um and then i'll see you guys next time